Welcome to the Introduction to Basin's WASP Network Tool webinar. This webinar series is produced by the Water Protection Division, TMDL Development Section, EPA Region 4. The WASP Network Tool is a plug-in to EPA's Basin's Geographical Information System Tool. The purpose of this tool is to build networks or model segmentations for rivers and streams in the United States. The WASP Network Tool requires a coverage from the National Hydrography Dataset Plus Stream Network, and you have optional uh, capabilities to bring in stream flows from USGS gauges and WRDP projects that have been built using basins. Simply, the tool using the NHD Plus Network can dynamically build a WASP Network where it will develop segmentation or break the water body up into computational boxes for the WASP model, develop all the flow routing, import time series, and then ultimately uh, create a file that's imported into WASP so that you can begin simulations with the model. Okay, we're going to give you an overview of the WASP network tool that is a plug-in to the basins framework for, for developing uh, model segmentation for the WASP model. This webinar assumes that you know how to create a basins project and you have downloaded the appropriate data. To use the WASP network tool, one of the required coverages that you're going to need is the National Hydrography data set, uh, basically the hydrography flow lines, which is this coverage right here. And it's a very, very detailed coverage of uh, hydrography in the United States. Just to refresh your memory, to download it, if you use a tool built into basins under file, download data, and then you would pick the hydrography coverage from the National Hydrography Dataset Plus. And that will be brought down and uh, processed directly in basins. Just an overview of which, where we're going to develop the WASP network. We certainly could develop a WASP network for this whole, for this whole area, but for the for point, uh, just for example, we are going to develop a network for this branch uh, in the watershed. And this is called uh, Little River. And this is the RF1 coverage. And if you look at the NHD Plus coverage, you'll see it's a lot more detailed. So we have functions in the WASP modeling tool that will allow us to pick and choose what we want to uh, set a WASP network up for. So with this coverage, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, We'll invoke the tool, and when you use this tool, it is a good idea if you have access to a computer that has two monitors, because you're going to be interacting with the uh, the tool and the GIS coverage uh, simultaneously. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and invoke the uh, the WASP network tool, which is located under Models WASP, and you get a screen that basically starts like this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tell it where we want to start our WASP network. So I'm going to use select stream reaches and build a new WASP model. Of course, if I was working on already, I can I could uh, open an existing one or just reopen the last one I had. But we're going to create a new one, so we're going to select stream reaches. Now what we need to do here is we need to go down to the bottom of where we want the network to be built. So the poor point of the WASP network which in our case is down here. So we need to make sure that the, the flow line feature of the National Hydrography data set is highlighted. And I'm going to select a segment or an arc down here. And I know it's very, very difficult to see because of the way Basins does the selection stuff. But if I actually zoom in, if I zoom in down here, you will see that the arc just went from blue to yellow. And now what I'm going to tell it to do is I'm going to ask it to go ahead and select upstream, but I'm going to use stream order to determine which, which segments will be included. I'm not going to use WASP all the way up into the first order streams. What we'll do is we'll get all the stream orders that are uh, stream order three or higher. And we're going to go ahead and tell it to select. And what the tool is doing is it's transversing up the NHD plus coverage and selecting all of the arcs that are equivalent to stream order three. So it said that there's 72 arcs. I'm going to hit continue. And now it's just asking me for a file name to save. And this is this happens to be the Uklockney River or the Little River in the Uklockney watershed. And I'm going to hit save. 
that just starts the save process. The other thing that it did here now is I'm going to zoom to this layer is it, it did initial it did an initial segmentation for me. Now this probably is not perfect for what we want to do and you'll also see over here that it's kind of telling us that some stuff might need a little bit of work. But the thing is we're going to be working with this coverage now so we actually could shut off the NHD coverage just so that we can see our uh, the network that we're working in. Now we have to be careful because as we do this there are some requirements for for WASP when it comes to doing uh, segmentation. We don't want big segments next to very very little segments because that causes stability problems and ultimately would make the model take a much smaller time step than we would want. So one of the first things that we can do to aggregate some of these is we can just give the tool some criteria. And in this case, I'm going to say, you know what, let's just, I want a minimum travel time of a tenth of a day. So I enter that up here and I say regenerate the network. So now it's regenerated the network and some of it is, uh, you'll see that some things have changed. We're going to have to do some work by hand as well. It also says, hey, one or more of the segments could, could not be combined to meet the travel time requirements. We might need to do that manually. And the reason why we have to do it manually is it just has to do with um, uh, how the NHD is laid out and how we can combine stuff together on the fly. So what we can do now is we can interactively work with the map to combine or, or, or divide to get the light travel times. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go towards the top here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So we can look at uh, a, look a little bit closer at the model network. Let me shut off this rib one, uh, RF1 coverage as well, just so we can see our colors the way we want we need to. Um, so right here, see there's this there's a little one. There's a little one up at the top that we can probably combine. See these two here. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the select tool and I'm going to select these two and you'll see that they're highlighted over here and I'm just going to click this button that says combine segments so instead of having that real little one next to a big one it's now combined and it's two and if we look down here we can see that most of these are of the same length um, and probably are okay for us in WASP if we look here, this one's probably okay. These two probably need to be combined, so we would combine them. These two would probably need to be combined because we're trying to get them about the, the, the same length in travel time. And you can use the calculations in the table over here to help you. Um, so this, this, this branch seems to be okay. This branch here looks like it could use a couple of co uh, combines. These, this one needs to be combined. These two could be combined. So this one looks like it's pretty okay. So now we got to work our way down here a little bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pan this up a little bit. and have a look in here. So this looks okay. Now th these two what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the other features. I'm going to select them and then I'm going to combine them. But these are prob this one is probably a little bit too long. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it again and then I'm going to say okay I want to divide it. So right now it's, it's point 0.1. If I just put in Zero, uh, five. I get two segments out of there. So that looks pretty good. So you can see how you can use this tool to uh, to get this network right. Um, let me just move down towards the bottom and see if we have any other issues down here. And we probably don't have any other issues down here. Now if we didn't want to consider the input from here. The other thing that you can do is you can actually select and then delete the segment. So that takes it out of out of our network. So right now the way we have it laid out there's going to be a wasp segment for each one of these colors. You actually could um, turn on 
some labeling to uh, show you what the segment numbers are. So that's pretty much, we'll leave it like this. Now let's just look at some of the other functionality of the tool.